Hello everyone, Dr. Suresh here again. And in this video, we'll talk about the characteristics of gluconeogenesis. This is a continuation of our previous video, gluconeogenesis. So, and in our previous video, we have discussed about the precursors of gluconeogenesis and what are the precursors and from how they will be entering into the pathway of gluconeogenesis. Okay, we have discussed in our previous video. So, in this video, we'll be talking about the characteristics. Like as I mentioned earlier, the reversal of glycolysis not 100% true gluconeogenesis is not reversal of glycolysis how as i mentioned three steps of glycolysis uh, making it not reversal of glycolysis because first third and tenth step of glycolysis uh, are irreversible steps otherwise rest of the seven or seven steps are reversible okay seven reversible reactions of glycolysis are used by gluconeogenesis and uh, three are irreversible and for that, uh, like you have to bypass those reactions with the help of some of the special enzymes, okay, or you call special reactions. Then you can say gluconeogenesis complete reversal of glycolysis along with the help of special reactions. So to make it simple and clear, I have made in this diagram side by side glycolysis and gluconeogenesis reactions. Okay, you see here glycolysis means uh, breakdown of glucose from uh, glucose and to form pyruvate and gluconeogenesis is nothing but like synthesis of pyruvate to glucose you see here in the red color okay in the red color side i mentioned gluconeogenesis re reactions and in the blue color i mentioned glycolysis reactions so here glucose so the enzyme involved is hexokinase okay the first step which forms it is irreversible you see here it is one way reaction there is no second way okay right and the same way Glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate is reversible. Again, fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Again, this is a one-way reaction. Okay. There is again the block. Okay. There is no upward this one. Okay. There is a block here. Right. Again, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate to glycerol 3-phosphate. Okay. Again, the 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to 3-phosphoglycerate. So, up to the last step, up to the last step of glycolysis, that is 10th step of glycolysis, where phosphoenol pyruvate can be converted to pyruvate. This is also one way reaction. So, totally, first step, third step, and the 10th step. So, these three are irreversible reactions, and we are making them uh, reversible by set of special reactions. Okay, and what are the enzymes will be requiring for this? making this reversal of uh, glycolysis uh, gluconeogenesis to glycolysis by what enzymes so first we have to come down as i said glucose to pyruvate same way pyruvate to glucose so the starting substrate in gluconeogenesis we make out uh, pyruvate you say lactose you can say and by lactose is converting to pyruvate anyhow for alanine also is dumping to liver lactate is also dumping to liver okay so where this pyruvate has to convert to another product Okay, so here in gluconeogenesis, we'll study from the bottom. Glycolysis, we have studied from the top, from glucose to pyruvate. And in gluconeogenesis, we'll study from the bottom, that is pyruvate. So you see here, pyruvate. So it is a irreversible reaction. Okay, so to in order to make it uh, form phosphoenol pyruvate, what happened? Pyruvate is a three carbon compound. So pyruvate has to convert it into oxaloid state. Oxaloid state is a four carbon compound. This is a three carbon oxaloid state is a four carbon so you have to add one carbon to pyruvate and this pyruvate is making oxaloid state by a enzyme pyruvate carboxylase carboxylase are the enzyme which add carbon okay add carbon group okay here two atps will be uh, involved and converted into two adps okay two atps will be involved and converted to two adps okay and this oxaloid state will be converted to phosphoenol pyruvate by removing carbon okay as carbon dioxide okay there is a removal of co2 okay here two gtps will be involved converting to two gtps so a total of four atps required for making phosphoenol pyruvate uh, via oxaloid state formation from pyruvate okay first three carbon pyruvate has to convert into four carbon oxaloid state again by removing one carbon from oxaloid state okay you will be making three carbon phosphoenol pyruvate okay now we you can make out now that is a reversible from 10th step to till third step okay till third step 
all the reactions are like this it will go it will go up to and it form fructose 1 6 bisphosphate then how to bypass this fructose 1 6 bisphosphate okay then how to bypass this fructose 1 6 bisphosphate okay there is an enzyme called fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase which hydrolyze fructose 1 6 bisphosphate to fructose 6 phosphate and there is a removal of phosphate group by adding water molecule okay now the other step like second step fructose 6 to glucose 6 phosphate is rever uh, reversible step and here glucose 6 phosphate again this step is also irreversible so there is an enzyme called glucose 6 phosphatase which hydrolyzes phosphate group from glucose 6 phosphate to form glucose so remember three enzymes which are mainly uh, involved in here one is uh, pyruvate kinase okay and uh, the third step that is phosphonyl pyruvate carbox four enzymes one is pyruvate kinase, phosphonyl pyruvate kinase, and third one is uh, fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase, and the fourth one that is glucose 6 phosphatase. So, these four enzymes makes gluconeogenesis is a reversal of glycolysis. Okay, so when you study properly glycolysis, you can it is easy to understand the pathway of gluconeogenesis. Okay, now coming to the significance of gluconeogenesis, what is the significance? So, when there is decrease in glucose concentration in the blood, okay, so the liver initiate the process gluconeogenesis and it increases glucose from non-carbohydrates and it will send to circulation, it brings back the normal level of glucose concentration in the blood, okay. And during starvation, the glucose is provided to the brain, brain, brain is solely dependent on glucose, no other molecule will be utilized for energy production. So, in that condition, continuous supply of glucose has to be there. So, liver will produce glucose and supply the produced glucose to brain. Okay. And other tissues like erythrocytes, lens, cornea of eye and kidney. So, gluconeogenesis is used to clear the products. Like as I said, when you hit the gym all of a sudden and because of the sternus exercise, uh, you will end up with the bad body pains for two, three, two to three days and after that, again, the body pains will be vanished. So, how it is possible? The accumulated lactate in the blood levels will be eventually cleared okay as this lactate will be transported to the liver and there it will be converted back to glucose and supplied to the skeletal muscles so that is the reason lactate produced by muscle and erythrocytes glycerol produced by adipose tissue peripheral coir produced by oxidation of odd chain carbon fatty acids okay and carbon skeleton of some amino acids and regulation when you talk about regulation of gluconeogenesis so as i mentioned four enzymes involved in the special reactions one is pyruvate carboxylase Phosphonyl pyruvate carboxykinase and fructose 1 6 bisphosphatase and glucose 6 phosphatase. So, all these has to be regulated. Okay, these are the key enzymes and all these has to be regulated. And there are hormonal regulation, you can say. Hormonal regulation in the sense insulin glucagon. So, glucagon is a hyperglycemic because here we need glucose. Okay, so we need hormones which increases glucose concentration. So, glucagon is a hyperglycemic hormone which is a positive stimulator for gluconeogenesis and insulin inhibits gluconeogenesis. Why? Because insulin is a hypo hypoglycemic hormone. It brings down the glucose levels. So, it is, has quite antagonist effect on gluconeogenesis. So, insulin inhibits gluconeogenesis by repressing the synthesis of the key enzymes of gluconeogenesis. And during starvation and in diabetes mellitus, high levels of gluco, uh, glucagon stimulates gluconeogenesis and ended up in production ketone bodies. Okay. And however, in well-fed state, insulin suppresses the gluconeogenesis. So, that is the difference. When you are in need of glucose under starvation, glucagon will come into the action, ask liver to produce glucose, okay, for continuous supplies to other tissues and the brain. And in case of well-fed state, glucagon will be inhibited, will not be secreted, insulin will be secreted and suppress the gluconeogenesis. You see here in the diagrammatic representation, so insulin is the inhibitor of gluconeogenesis, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate and AMP also is the inhibitor of uh, gluconeogenesis. Okay, here glucagon is a stimulator of gluconeogenesis, citrate is a stimulator and estyl coa is also stimulator of gluconeogenesis. So in red and green color, I have uh, mentioned about the uh, positive inhibitors and the negative inhibitor, positive modulators and negative inhibitors. Uh, of uh, gluconeogenic mechanism okay so that's all about gluconeogenesis thanks for watching thank you